What's happening, my beautiful people? My name is Mike LaBelle. Welcome back to The Playbook. Today, this is going to be the most comprehensive video on dribbling that you've seen on the internet talking FC24. So if you could, like it, bookmark it, save it, share it. And if you have not subscribed, it is free to do so. Now, the baseline, we're going to be talking all about R1 dribbling. So you're holding R1. Preferably, if you have someone that has some play styles, he's going to look a lot better doing this. That left analog stick is your movement. I personally really love uh, technical for this. It allows your player to move a little bit better. You can intertwine sprinting and then looking at the R1 dribbling and trying to mix and match. But I'm telling you now, full-fledged disclaimer, that is not going to be the most effective way to utilize R1 dribbling. And for any of you, if you're struggling with movement offensively, with dribbling in particular, it's likely, as a free tip, that you are over sprinting. It's one of the biggest mistakes that I see from beginner, intermediate, even advanced players sometimes. I'm holding that sprint button now. We have six categories and I'd like to start with active footwork. This is the best way to start using the R1 dribble. And this is typically, at least in my mindset, when I'm inside the box, I need some sort of pace or some sort of bump. We've got Doku, who I already know can move and groove with the best of them. But at the same time, I've got defenders that I got to deal with. I might have just turned one player. He's out of the picture. But if I just go for a simple sprint or I try to walk the ball in, it's not going to be enough. I have to be more dynamic. Even with a player as fast as Doku, I realize I'm still going to have to beat another defender. And the R1 dribble gets my feet moving quick, which allows me to be more reactive. And you can go in and out of skills or just stick with the R1 dribble and that left analog stick for directionals. So that's what we're going to do. Cuts to the inside. Players out of position. We now have the angle for a very simple finish. This is route one, early edition. If you're going to use R1 dribbling, get the ball into a dangerous location and it's time to go. You activate tucks that home don't worry we have plenty more holland a player that's not necessarily known for dribbling can be a little bit clunky another reason that i wanted to showcase this example because a lot of people feel you can only do r1 dribbling or only be effective with r1 dribbling if you have elite dribblers those are bonuses those types of players make it look a little more effortless they make it easier but it is not the say all be all in terms of a success story but you have to challenge players there's so many damn players in the box all the time i just made a video yesterday talking a lot about AI defending and conquering AI defending. We will touch on that in this video, but the R1 dribble is still going to be your best friend. If you're dealing with a lot of defenders, and look at this, one screenshot, everyone from my opponent's team is in one screenshot. It's not even half of the pitch. It's a third of the pitch and everybody's there. This is the reality. Bus drivers are coming in stronger than ever. You might argue that seven of these players are actually in a location that's going to impact you, but still pretty ridiculous. Holland, we're going to R1 dribble inside. Look at this. Look at this. I'm just looking for some sort of space. We get the extra pass in the finish. It's a smarter way to recycle, especially with a guy that's clunky. Let me run that back because you might question why is this important? Because of Holland not being very fast, when I turn to the inside, we don't have any options. We don't have good openings. If anything, these are the players that you'd really want to pinpoint, but they're not available. You're not getting past what's in front of us. So you've got to go back, but you want to go back with pace. Even a half second of pace plays a big factor at higher levels. So we are one dribble. There's the layoff, quick pass on the drop off. Nakata beats the goalkeeper, but that pass is not open if we don't get the ball resurfaced recycled quick enough remember fifa or fc they are simple games at the end of the day sun cuts it back we get it to holland i'm trying to identify some sort of space once i've cut here just a little bit inside i now have hopes dreams ambitions can i kick through this space the answer is yes but i have to go fast i have to be aggressive you pull the r1 you don't need any other moves you don't have to go into any of the flares the tricks and i teach that i love a pretty goal but holland's not really going to be that guy if you want someone with roulette flicks and tricks and rainbows and cancellations that's just not holland burst through pure power goalkeeper i don't care what you do we have a left foot on us next now we're talking about re-angling and this is going to be crucial for finishing increasing your percentage of converting opportunities still deals with the r1 dribble musiala cuts inside we're starting to move and groove so we're in this dangerous location here our opposition has decided to play for the pass across, which happens quite frequently, but that's okay. R1 dribbling, we're going to attack this bit of space, but I still have to have the ability to finish. And a lot of us, myself included, it's new this year, you're looking for the pass. You always think you have to square it. You have to lay it off, not with R1 dribbling. Because of how quick the execution is, you could take it around the goalkeeper. There you have it and you tap it home. 
And you might have seen this goal. You've scored it. You've conceded it. This is all about R1 dribbling for the finish. You can take it right around the goalkeeper. You create a new angle. Re-angle. I've got more of the same. And I might even drop this in another updated corner kick tutorial. So we're just doing an R1 dribble. My opponent does not want to go for the challenge. And then we're putting her on our hip. Once we've closed off the defender, if you're going to go for a challenge there, more than likely we're drawing a penalty kick. I also like a lot of work down the end line or the sidelines mainly because if I lose the ball, it's likely I still retain possession. I know that people aren't a big fan. It's a lot of sweat this year. I totally get that. So similar scenario as before. We're in a great position. These would be our two options. I wouldn't say either of them are really open. They're kind of covered. Therefore, I'm thinking to myself, I've already got the defender on my hip. I could probably take this around the goalkeeper and just a little sidestep and now I have an angle to score a goal there it is I've got so many clips for you today I mean it extra layoff again Rodrigo my options they're not really there and a reoccurring theme and I hate to talk about this all the time but you have to you got eight players in the box defensively eight you can count them with me and my guy's not open you might be struggling you're like how do I make these passes Mike they're not there they're not available and it's again why you have to rely on this final skill or the final dribble and I believe it is much easier and my oppositions my opponents the people that I'm going up against it seemingly would agree to master or to learn the r1 dribble this year as it stands as opposed to a bunch of different skills Skills. It's more rewarding if we're just talking efficiency. Now, maybe not visually more rewarding, but it's more effective. Undoubtedly, we're going to challenge this man right here. And I can't stress this enough. You have to look at who your opponent is controlling or is not controlling. It tells you a lot. It gives you a narrative and a story that you can work with. We beat him. Little sidestep. You can already see the angle that I've created. That's just R1. A little step to the left. A little step to the right. One quick touch. And then you have the ability to beat the goalkeeper. And I love just tapping these holes. I don't even power them up. Forget about it. I'm calling this end line motion. You can call it end line sweat. This is a position you're going to find yourself in time and time again, and you have to do it. Whether you love it, you hate it, too many goals are generated, and this is where the R1 dribbling allows you to be abusive, to be aggressive, to be decisive. We got two players chasing back. We don't have a lot of space to work with. I have to take advantage of what the game is giving us. So we're going to R1 dribble and look to challenge that front end man. It also helps that he's being manually controlled, even though you can beat the AI with this skill all day, every day. So I'm already thinking to myself, where am I trying to go? I want to take the ball into this location. And then at the same time, I'm hoping that one of my two offensive players are going to either push forward or find space behind these defenders. Either way, I'm trying to draw someone out of position. That's why this is so effective because it's difficult to score for one. Defending is unbelievable in terms of some of the AI assistance. And this is a way to give you better consistency, better continuity. Rodrigo, we just push it forward, extra touch, then you lay it off, tap it home. There is nothing fancy about the goal. Again, visually stimulating and pleasing, probably not. Effective, absolutely. You're seeing a trend with Holland. And I like this example in particular because it's a bit of a 2v2. We don't see this that much. Generally speaking, bodies get back. So whenever you have a chance to go 2v2, you have to take advantage. And the defenders are going to have to make a decision here. And the idea is I want to force a decision and I want to do it with the least amount of risk. That's what I'm assessing. Someone like Holland, we talked about it earlier. I know my player. He's clunky. I don't care what else you have to say. He's explosive. He's strong. He's physical. He's big. He's acrobatic, but he is clunky. Therefore, I don't want to go into necessarily necessarily even a step over or a body faint which are relatively simple and wake up skills especially not a ball roll I don't want to go into a roulette or I can't even do an elastico or a burba spin or his heel to heel is going to be sloppy I need something that is as simple as they come but still gives me a little bit of a burst I want to play the two-man game we're going to do exactly that and I'm going to take advantage of this space so I'm hoping that I either either have enough time to beat that defender and I can go directly at goal or I'm going to have some sort of layoff Holland he kind of gets froze up a little bit of explosion in the game just gets so simple anyone can score from here it's bad defending from our opponent but it, it starts with poor manual defending the fact that we're in a 2v2 and then we use the skill that's simple yet it's fast it has fast execution you're gonna have the easiest one two three of your life right we're gonna tap this home again your mother your father your sister your anyone that's touched the game before will finish this opportunity you name someone you like or you dislike your cousin your grandkids i can just keep going beautiful you need automatic finishes we're talking foot champs level division rivals i want you to have as best success as possible defeating the 
AI defending. And I have to make a statement. I put up a video yesterday. It might be linked right here that covers this specific example in greater detail. And what I mean by that is I have 10, 11, 12 of the exact same example, and it will help you understand register. It is crucial to your success, especially at a higher level. As the game stands, you need to master this. So we've got inside pass Musiala, who does have the technical play style. Plus, as soon as I turn this defender, I now know I've got space. And what's so special about the r1 dribbling is that it almost immediately puts you into a sprint while still having the ability to turn a defender to be reactive and it allows you to scoop past defenders and ai defenders so in this case we've got three players i know that i'm going to crush them and i don't know why my opponent is switched on to this winger it's a bad option of choice and what i've noticed is when you already started your r1 dribble even when your opposition player switches sometimes it's too little too late so again i know that i have the space and if anything i'm really dealing with these defenders What's so unique about the R1 dribbling is once you start, doesn't mean that you, you can't stop and go, that you can't adjust on the fly. Something I've noticed with plenty of players that are using this dribbling, but they're a little more one-dimensional, they don't take their finger off the trigger. You can look for the extra pass or go into a skill or recycle, whatever you need to do. That's not gonna be the case in this example either way. We turn Musiala, now I'm in a full sprint, doesn't matter what you do. I'm taking this to the house, good luck super slow player switching we are going to be rewarded for registering for understanding and i talked about it in the previous video but i want to reiterate here if you're looking to run through the defense which you should these are going to be your locations right here these are the danger zones where you can attack and attack it, it just the way the game works regardless of what formation your opposition is playing generally speaking as long as they have a four at the back this is definitely what you're looking for because you can split the defense you can create those gaps and with that burst of pace you now have created new angles and it's a competitive advantage and it fits into the meta musiala i've been cooking with musiala from the beginning of the game for a reason we'll look at this one more time and you can see i'm trying to assess how the hell do i get into the box and at this moment i know my opponents made a big error huge error you got two players sitting on top of each other and then as i was stating there's a lot of bodies here a ridiculous amount of bodies if we're being honest 10 players all surrounding me, but two of them that are going to be out of position. And maybe even more importantly, I can already see the gaps forming. It's the same area that you're analyzing and you're trying to generate as much as possible. We've got Musial. He's going to spurt right through there. And now it's just close control dribbling. My opposition is actually trying to go with the chase back. I still have some work to do here. At the end of the day, we're able to register. Musiala, leather extra touch, cuts it back. We tap it home. I love punishing people that just stand there and look at you. I think we can all agree that's annoying and it is part of this year's title from the pressure play to the way that players park the bus, the natural movement and lack thereof offensively, it forces you to become one of these dribblers if you wanna have success and you wanna be able to convert opportunities. The single touch, it's something that's so underutilized and it bothers me a little bit. It's not advanced, it's the easiest of any inclusions when we're talking about R1 dribbling. You don't have to sprint forward, you don't have to always push the ball aggressively forward sometimes you beat a man you cause a little bit of hesitation you just r1 trigger quick movement and then you stop and that's what this kind of addresses here musiala there's your r1 dribble i got myself into a better attacking zone i needed to attack that space for a skill move or a cancellation for a secondary decision to be made and it also created a little bit of a degree of separation that i find is important by me using that r1 dribble one two three all of the the midfielders that have been chasing back that are not even actively chasing back they're just not close enough to me now to make a tackle when i try to pull the ball back if i look for a resurface i look for a different chance or a different opportunity understood so it's more about get this guy off my back get this guy off my back get this guy off my back that guy's really not in range musiala there it is perfect could not have a better example these guys are all standing flat just looking at me they're ball watching but if i didn't take that little sprint dribble forward they would now be in the cookie basket they'd be close enough to get an ai tackle without anyone controlling them but as it stands that little bit of separation gives me a chance to work it into the box we do a lot with the skills here rodrigo's trying to dance trying to prance the fake shot it's gorgeous the recycle give it back to musiala let him finish let him cook. Love it. Let me paint a picture. I'm about to chef this up. My opposition, he's controlling block. The way that he's facing, it doesn't look like he's going to try to make a run with Holland, which tells me that his block has to be stepping towards me. So how am I going to react? I don't have a lot of time. He's going to be coming at me. So what I'm thinking, little R1 dribble, I take it around block. I got an easy pass for Holland. Watch. Boom. One. No more dribbling needed. Now Holland has unlimited room to run into. We're going to have a breakaway. You can't mess up this through ball. You can go in the air you can go on foot you name it it's happening 
Pass is made. Holland bursting. Big first touch. Power through. Little goal. The movement we saw it coming. Last but not least, and I'm calling this the Hail Mary, which is more of an American football reference. If you know, then you know. I don't think it's something that's never used in other sports, but there is an effectiveness to this. Uh, I'm not going to say you're going to get away with it often. You definitely should not make this a mainstay. I've got absolutely no help. Holland is on his own island, but I do also notice there's a lot of space. And there's not a lot of defenders. There's no midfield. I don't have support. There's nothing there. I can give you a closer look. Look at this. There's nothing. So that just means I don't have support, but my opponent also doesn't have the help of a track back. So if I can take on and beat or make this first man uncomfortable, I might have something that I can work with here. And this is where I'm going on a 1v4, basically. Even though the players are relatively spread out, which I, again, I think it makes this easier. It makes it more helpful. If you beat one or two key players, you might be off to the races. But it's still a Hail, Hail Mary because it's low percentage that this is going to work. That is my disclaimer. Holland. Little skill move. We start the dribble right here. There it is. And now we turn him. Now we've got something cooking. That first man, he is shook. And one of the advantages of Holland in particular is because he's so physical, he's so big. If you beat somebody, you can hold him off. So now I'm still thinking I might have to take this man on. And it's a little bit of a game of jigging that left analog stick to see if you can cut around him. We do indeed. There it is. Out of the pitcher. End up with a rebound. But a goal is a goal. And it all starts in a one on none, a classic Hail Mary. And I thought it was worth showcasing because I've scored and conceded this goal more than you would expect. I just don't have it as a mainstay in my offense. But you can catch somebody sleeping. You could take advantage of the space. And the dribbling is explosive enough. If you beat the front man, or you beat the front couple guys, you'll be gone. Just one quick turn and you could take off. Talking rocket ships, Tesla stock, everything is on the up and up. Even though I didn't even mention EV vehicles. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section again i believe this is the most comprehensive video there is on the internet about this subject where we can not only show you how to do it but it's really about integration if you don't know how to integrate a skill a maneuver an intangible both defensively and offensively what are we really talking about you're not going to necessarily get better at the game you just learned how to do something in the arena i want you to have full levels of execution and online matches if you're new free to subscribe i appreciate you drop some love in the comments drop some love on the video i just want people to see the information that we're providing with hopefully good energy and very helpful to the community. As always, I have a lot more coming out ASAP, ASAP.